as we move on from, shall we say, 2020, from, quote, getting Brexit done, the one thing I always said and always will say about this, Brexit's never over. It is a constant, never-ending merry-go-round where issues and stuff will just continuously crop up again and again and again and again. That's essentially what the current deal that Boris Johnson has subjected us to. Um, but in a in a bizarre twist of fate, the more closer we are aligned with Europe, which again raises questions of well, if we're that closely aligned, then why aren't we in you know the customs union single market, you know, the EU itself? The more of those problems, shall we say, get solved, whereas the further we go, the more essentially we go round and round faster on our lovely Brexit merry-go-round. And of course, Brexiteers desperately pushing for that no deal. But the more our government continues this foolish attempt to of, of saber-rattling, trying to uh, appease its, well, shall we say, Brexit backbenchers, um, the more we get cut out of, of programmes or, or other things that, that Europe does, which are sort of quite important to us. One of them being Horizon, the, well, the, the, well, the Horizon programme itself. And essentially it's a massive European investment into sort of not only science, but technology. And if we get cut out of that, then that could be the UK cut out of some serious you know, scientific and technological development. And as we've said before, there is no way the UK by itself can replicate some of these programmes. And as much as the UK government loves to talk about, oh yes, we're supporting, um, you know, science and things like that, we just had the very, very embarrassing uh, point of where the UK wanted to attract um you know, people who who had won sort of Nobel prizes in in science, or or like were top level scientists, none of them applied for it because no one of them wanted to come to the UK. Because as you may remember, when we covered that, um, one UK scientist basically just said, "Yeah, look, you might come over here, but you might find yourself with far not only lower funding than you had from when the country you came to." So instantly, as you can see. That was pretty much reason why no one applied for it. But, of course, with the ongoing rows of Northern Ireland, it looks like, well, the EU was sort of pulling out their scissors and starting to, well, cut us away from certain programmes, which we're going to be going over today. So, uh, before we do go jumping into this, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And, of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page and our donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And, as always, thank you very much to all those people who do watch, help and support the channel in that way. So, on with this. This comes from The Guardian with the title of Cambridge University Astrophysicist Loses Space Project Role Amid Brexit Row. And this is what we said would eventually happen if we... Um, start to do this, then of course, you know, the EU will just retaliate. And those retaliations hurt us far more than, you know, the Brexiteers crying about their, their purity of Brexit. We must have a pure Brexit and, you know, we must have a, a clean break. But this is, I think, part of their sort of grand master plan of, well, we can't legislate for a no-deal Brexit, but we can force one if we, shall we say, push for it hard enough and make it seem like, oh, this was done to us by the EU, not us doing, well, a no-deal Brexit. So let's get on with this. A Cambridge University astrophysicist studying the Milky Way and hoping to play a major part in the European Space Agency's, or the ESA's, next big project, has now been forced to hand over his coordinating role on the scheme after the row over the Northern Ireland Brexit arrangements put science in the firing line. Nicola Watson, uh, uh, Nic yeah, sorry, Nicholas, sorry, not, not Nicola, Nicholas Wal uh, Walton, 
a research fellow at the Institute of Astronomy, reluctantly passed his leadership role in the 2.8 million pan-European Marie Curie network research project to a colleague in the Netherlands on Friday. The European Commission has written, notifying him of UK scientists cannot hold leadership roles because of the UK's membership of uh, membership of the flagship 800 billion Horizon Europe HE funding network has not been ratified. Walton was uh, was to have at least led a doctoral network related to the ESA's Gaia mission that was mapping nearly two billion stars in the Milky Way. He is just uh, one of a handful of British uh, uh, physicists approved for the HE grant, but must now make a must now take a passenger seat on his own project. I mean, imagine that you've been running that project and now you've been told, sorry, you know, you've got to take a back row to that. Again, none of this sounds very good at all when you look at it. And what's 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 this going to overall be the overall when you know you look at science as a whole in the UK? I mean, again. It's, we've said before the government love to talk about things like this from from leveling up to to brexit itself but when it actually comes to doing the stuff they don't really seem to be all that involved with it and when most of sort of you look certainly back over the past 10 years most of the science funding hasn't come from the uk government it's come from europe which puts in question the UK's future as a leader in sort of science research and development, which, again, the UK post-Brexit, and especially sort of the Brexiteers, were very much uh, proudly proclaiming how good we were at that thing and how they will continue to, to fund these, these projects, but they're not. Oh, dear. <laughs> but anyway, we continue. Uh, Carsten uh, Walsh, a physicist at the Liverpool University, who who has won a 2.6 million euros in funding, also from the Marie Curie Network for a long term research on a a novel plasma generator, is also facing the same dilemma. Move to the uh, EU or hand over leadership to an EU institution to secure a research role. So brain drain massive potential brain drain here and this is going to cause huge problems huge problems anyway it continues uh saying here so as the uk's association on horizon europe uh, isn't completed we are now at the real risk of losing our leadership in this consortium and to be marginalized it is really heartbreaking given the long and extremely successful track record in scientific collaboration between the UK and the EU, he said. Both Welsh and Walton say that the loss of their roles in this research networks is only part of the picture. With Horizon Europe uh, comes a ringside seat in a far bigger project worth billions of euros involving networks of academia and industry. The damage is already being done. Our influence is eroding, said Welch. Walton's coordination role came with the opportunity to be part of the European team uh, of the defining science case for over the one billion successor to Gaia, the ESA's Voyage 2050 program, and to train a new cohort of astronomers. It is about jobs and the economy, and ultimately, this makes the UK a wealthier society, he said. Last week, the EU's ambassador uh, to the UK, John Avail, uh, D. Almalda, admitted that British science could very well be a victim to political impasse. So Adrian Smith, the president of the Royal Society, said, the window for the association is closing fast, and we need to ensure that the political issues do not uh, get in the way of sensible solutions. We will always have been very clear the association preferred the outcome of protecting decades of collaborative research and benefits this has brought to the people's lives across the continent and beyond. Welsh is again considering his options and uh, and said that an offer by the UK to step in with alternative funding is fantastic in principle, but he says it is not a replacement. 
Well, UK Research and Innovation uh, Guarantee Fund provides vital financial support and allows UK institutions to contribute as an associated partners without EU funding, it means that UK institutions can no longer lead projects, can no longer be in charge of product milestones, and overall, it feels as if the UK is losing, is losing its important leadership. Um, this is going to be obviously affect the UK massively. And this is something long term that this is going to do damage to. Because if you are now a scientist and you want to, um, you know, do these projects or you want to lead this stuff. Yeah, OK, it might be great that, you know, the UK might come and go, here's a research grant. But it's nothing compared to the leadership roles, the money available, the opportunities that become available in Europe. And as a result, we'll just have scientists leave and go over to Europe. And that is brain drain. And that becomes very, very dangerous, um, especially economically, because this will put us behind massively. Maybe not currently at the moment, but as the more this goes on, the worse it will become. And just as we uh, have fallen behind in sort of industrial, um, you know, strategy, capacity and, and capabilities in the UK, we could very well find ourselves falling behind that in science and a technology type of way as well. And for an economy like ours, that can be far, far worse. So. As always, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and our updates link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.